For our purposes, we define a population as a group of organisms of the same species living within a prescribed geographical area. So let's say that we have um, a population of a thousand individuals and we're interested in an autosomal gene A with two alleles big A and little a. And so now let's say we genotype each individual and we get the following results. For the homozygous big A, we see out of these thousand individuals, 795 of them have this genotype. We have 190 heterozygotes, and we find just 15 homozygous little a. That is to say that in this population, 79.5% of the individuals are homozygous dominant, 19% of the individuals are heterozygous, and just 1.5% of the individuals are homozygous recessive, right? And so we've gone from a count, right, how many individuals we have, to a frequency Right, the frequency or the proportion of the, pop of the population that has each of these genotypes. And so, if we allow these individuals to mate randomly, what will be the genotype frequencies of the next generation? And the word random is key here, because if this mating is random, then a zygote's alleles are chosen randomly from the entire population of alleles. And the transmission has to be analyzed in terms of alleles, not genotypes, because the alleles are what are transmitted, not the genotypes, right? One allele from one parent and one allele from another. And so in order to determine the possible genotypes of the next generation, and their um, likelihood of occurring, we actually have to ask what are the frequencies of the big A and little a alleles. And we can find that out, of course, by looking at the genotype distribution, right? So because there are 795 homozygous big A individuals, that means that they will contribute 1,590 big A alleles, and similarly, there are 15 homozygous little a individuals, which means that they contribute 30 little a alleles to the allele distribution. And then, of course, we've got the heterozygotes, right? So they contribute 190 alleles to, uh, of big A and 190 alleles of little a. And so we end up with a total of 1,780 big A alleles and 220 little a alleles. And again, we'll go ahead and recast this as uh, from a count to a frequency distribution as well, right? And so we take each of these numbers, we divide them by 2,000, and we find that 89% um, of the total alleles are big A, and that leaves 11% of the alleles are little a. And now we're ready to answer our original question. What is the frequency that we will see of these possible genotypes in this next generation, right? And we can answer that because mating is random, right? And so the probability that this allele will be big A is 89%. The probability that this allele will be little a is 11%. But because mating is random, which allele um, that happens to be the second one 
is an independent event from the allele that this individual got from their first parent, right? And so this allele has a probability of being big A of 89% and a probability of being little a of 11%. And so what is the probability that this individual is big A, big A, right? The probability of big A, big A is because this, these two events are independent, right? The probability of being big A times the probability of being big A, right? 89% times 89% is 79.5%. Similarly, for a homozygous little a, little a, right? The probability of little a, little a is the probability of little a times the probability of little a is 11% times 11% is 1.5%. And when we consider the heterozygote, right? Remember that there are two possible ways that um, an individual could be a heterozygote. They could get the big A from the first parent and the little a from the second parent, or they could get the little a from the first parent and the big A from the second parent, right? And so, again, because these are independent, we multiply them together, but there are two mutually exclusive options here, and so, Right, big A from the first parent or little a from the first parent, big A, little a from the second parent or big A from the second parent, right? And so this is two times the probability of receiving big A and times the probability of receiving little a, which is 19%. So now compare these probabilities, 79.5%, 1.5%, and 19%, to these probabilities, 79.5%, uh, and 19%. What do you notice? They're the same. Because mating is random, the allele frequency in the second generation is the same as the allele frequency in the first generation. This is the basic insight behind Hardy-Weinberg, right? We say that such a population where from one generation to the next generation, the allele frequencies and the genotype frequencies aren't changing, we say that that population is in Hardy-Weinberg equilibrium. And next, we'll see some ways that we can put, uh, some, some uses to which we can put this idea.